but I've tried lightweight silencers on this, and as much as they do reduce a bit of capacity, having that extra bit of weight at the muzzle, not that it's overly heavy, is nice. It's not the quietest mod in the world, but it's neither is it the biggest. So it's, it's all about payoff, really. And it's a 3006, so it's not quiet anyway. I think we've got the 20 inch fluted semi-weight barrel. There's a lot of barrel options with these. This is just, just the one that I went for. It's, it's good. Uh, most impressively is the coating they put on it, actually. It's not in the best of order, potentially, but that is what happens when you use gear. And with anything that I do and anything that I use, I like to use it quite hard. I suppose not out of choice, it's just a personal preference. I do use my gear hard. It's also important that these things stand up to the test that professionals give, and I'm not a professional stalker. I've shot a good number of deer with this rifle. I've been out with it a lot in all weathers, and it's important that it performs, so I'm not going to baby it. There's no point in actually learning about the guns and how they do from, from both the gun review and my gunsmith point of life by babying it, because you'll never really get a true sense of if it's any good or not. The forend is a standard Alpinist forend. You've got this green rubberized texture. As you can see, it's just starting. There's a bit of damage on the bottom there, but this does happen, there's a tiny little bit of peeling at the back. So this is a two, and this wasn't a new rifle when I got it, I should point out, and there was a couple of bits already on it. But this has been woodland stalking through really very thick woodland, and numerous amounts of times it's been on barbed wire fences. It's, just, it's had a good life, a good hard use life, and it's held up immensely well. On the back you'll notice I have a very large limb saver pad. This is not because I am a bitch. This is actually because the importance of gun fit was really thrown up with this. Uh, it's got a leather sling, uh, some rings and a scope, by the way, as well. Uh, the scope is unimportant, the rings are unimportant. They're, I mean, they're, they are loopholed rings and it's a meopter scope, but where the rail is quite good, I actually change the scope out on this. Not regularly, but often enough, and it's always back to zero, which is pretty good. Um, I found more with this rifle than anything else is the design spec of this rifle, unsurprisingly, being a Merkel Helix, if we look at the action here, it is geared, it's a geared straight pull. It's probably worth watching the other review video we did if you want something a bit more technical than what I'm going to do today. It's a gear straight bolt. So every inch that you move this moves that bolt much more, which gives you a superbly fast cycling action. It's not really designed for long range single shot accuracy. It's designed for driven hunting. That's the, the main purpose behind this rifle. Super fast reloads shooting at driven game. That was probably why they designed it. And straight pull rifles were not designed with that in mind, but most of that is that, that is their main market, and we have adopted them in the UK for what we do them for. That being the case, the stock specs on this gun are not designed to be shot prone, designed for ultra accuracy. They're designed for comfort, stood up. So if you're gonna buy one of these to shoot prone at long range, it's probably not the best rifle for the job. Let's be honest. But I'm hoping that's not why you'd consider buying one of these. They're ultra versatile. But finding that actually they end up, because of the stock spec and the extra drop, there is a little bit more kick than other rifles that are designed for prone shooting, bench rest, that kind of thing.